is back in town. It's like unwrapping a box of memories from the Icarus Trophy. So if you remember from the race, I had issues with my clutch. It was like half binding up sometimes and then sometimes it was okay. But I went ahead and I ordered a new clutch and I ordered a few other parts. These little uh, bushing kits that wear out every 25 hours, a new gasket, and this thing is a mess. The Icarus Trophy was 36 hours of abuse with no maintenance on the motor. So it's no wonder it got dirty. My goal for today is just to clean up the Scout. Uh, I have to pull off the clutch. We're gonna see if that's actually the problem. I'm assuming it's the clutch, but it could be a bearing issue, but we'll see. So at the end of the race, I pulled the plug on the motor and this is what it looked like. So that's kind of concerning. I think uh, part of it was due to just not changing the plug for an extended amount of time and running 50-50 av gas and pump gas. So I'm gonna pull the head just to make sure we don't have like massive carbon buildup and just see how clean it is inside. So let's pull the head and check it out. Look at that. It's about 36 hours of zero maintenance and av gas slash pump gas at 75 to one will do to your engine. Let's uh, clean that up. All right, so I used a wire brush on the piston and the head just to kind of knock most of the carbon buildup off. I didn't like want to scrape it or gouge anything. I'm gonna torque these guys up to the right torque spec. Then I gotta take the spindle bit and the pulley bit and pull that off. And that's when we're gonna see what the deal is with the clutch. So I got the thing pulled off. It's actually the next day because I had to go out and get a different puller to make this happen. The clutch itself looks relatively okay. The only thing I see is the corner of this plate piece is chipped slightly. And if you look at the inside of the bell, everything looks good also, except the front bit. You can see there's definitely a drag mark right there, which I would imagine Something probably got in here and chipped this piece and wedged itself in here. And that's what was causing the drag and the scraping. All right, so I've got the new clutch installed, the belts back on, I tensioned it. Everything looks and feels really good. Tonight's weather actually looks really good. It's cloudy, but calm. So I'm gonna try to get everything ready for that. That's the plan. Uh, engage some time lapses. <laughs> Day has finally come. The scout's assembled. It's all shiny and clean, ready to go. And we're gonna go flying. It's a little bit breezy. It's not bad. I don't really have any plan tonight other than just random shenanigans. We'll cruise around, maybe kick some trees, maybe land somewhere. But regardless, it's gonna be a good time. So I'm gonna warm up my motor and we'll go cruise around. All right. 
right, motor sounds absolutely brilliant after I cleaned out all the freaking lead from Avgas. And now we're back at lower altitude, so it's gonna have more power naturally. I feel so light. I feel like I could sprint a mile like this. All right, let's get up in the air and then we'll just, we'll, we'll futz around a little bit. So easy, why is it so easy? Dude man with his dog over there says he watches me on YouTube. Shout out to dude man with the dog. I guess we'll buzz around Jacqueline a little bit because she's got the camera. So I gotta be honest, this isn't my first flight back. I did one flight that was just super random and it was right at sunset and it was cloudy and dank. And I didn't feel like filming, but I did feel a little bit risky biscuits. And don't tell my mom, but I did my first ever wingtip drag. Which basically, you spiral at the ground and you do just a massive turn at full power and drag your wingtip on the ground. I did it right there. I didn't have any cameras on me. I just wanted it to be me because it's a really dangerous thing to do. But Jacqueline actually filmed on her phone so shout out to my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, you should probably do that. I posted the video that Jacqueline got. Let's perch on this hill. Boink! Yeah, I posted the video that Jacqueline got of my first ever wingtip drag. It was epic. Don't hit the tree. Swinging around, flare in the turn. Stop! And charge it, Jacqueline! All right, let's get out of here. There's a pumpkin patch down this way that I'm interested in seeing if there's anyone pip picking pumpkins. Well, here's the pumpkin patch. But nobody's home. I wish I could pick up a pumpkin with my feet. Just freaking steal a pumpkin. Hmm. Should I do a touch and go in the pumpkin field? I think it's doable. Let's give this a shot. Pumpkin field touch and go. If I go down in this field, it's going to be awkward. Because it's going to be a pain to get back out. Ooh, this is risky. That's awesome. To a degree, I feel like so much safer <laughs> and like I can do anything on this wing. This is a 19 meter ozone free ride that I flew in the race. Normally I was flying a Viper 416, which is a ballistic little wing and it's so much fun. But at the same time, hey, hot air balloons way down the valley. At the same time, having a bigger wing like this, it's just got so much more lift. It still is probably like 85% as maneuverable because it's still a really high performance wing, but it has so much more lift because it's three square meters bigger. Well, those hot air balloons took off from that field back there right by the pumpkin patch and they haven't really gotten that far. I might as well go chase them down and see where they end up landing. <laughs> People waving at the farm. Hey, this might actually be fun. So those three balloons are heading right to the AMP that is the legendary shopping plaza where the McDonald's is located, where I did the flying my paramotor to McDonald's video. It looks like those balloons are trying to set up the land there. And if they land there, I might as well land there. Yep, number one is down in the AMP yard. <laughs> Saw, man. I'm just gonna put the disclaimer in here. Everyone always comments, guarantee that someone's gonna say, oh, these people just wanna fly around peacefully in their hot air balloon, and you come buzz by your damn whirly fan, 
and disturb their beautiful evening. No, these guys love it. <laughs> so we orbit, then we jet away. Seriously, all three balloons are landing in this AMP parking lot where I landed for McDonald's. If I had my wallet, I would legitimately just go walk in and get McDonald's. <laughs> oh, this is a riot. Please don't go through that light pole. I'm debating on if I should come in and land fully, but like, I don't have anything to do once I'm on the ground. It's just gonna be awkward. So I might as well just do a touch and go. <laughs> Watch out for those power lines. <laughs> oh, that's so rad. Visibility today is incredible. <laughs> so this guy's coming in to a site over there, and I can see their chase vehicle <laughs> freaking blazing down the shoulder, passing cars, trying to get ahead. Let's see where this guy ends up. And then I'll probably start venturing back down the valley towards the park. Their chase vehicle just pulled into that gas station. It looks like that's where he's headed. He's gonna cross the highway, plop down in that little gas station there. That's my bet. Maybe not. He might overshoot it to the right. No, nope, he's not gonna make it. His chase vehicle's leaving the gas station. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh boy. He might be going risky. I think he's going for this gravel lot gonna bomb it in there real fast. It's like at sports games where they like commentate what's going on like really fast. I'm just up here like, commentating this hot air balloon flight. I think he's going too fast. He's gonna go right over it. Yep. That's an official go around. His chase vehicle is confused. He's done three U-turns so far. Oh, he's hooking a hard left. Yeah, I think he might just make it into that gas station after all. Oh yeah, you got it buddy. Keep on hooking left. You got this. Dude, if he passes just the very corner of this. Yep, his chase vehicle's out. <laughs> he's hauling ass down the road. I think he's aborting this, this operation altogether. All right, he's gonna go over that field. I'm gonna come futz around in this field and then we'll seriously start heading back. This is a scrubby ass field. Make sure we get pretty far downwind before we start futzing around. What the f is that? Is that an albino deer? Oh shit, that's a dog? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Here's his chase vehicle. That's a pretty, pretty nice van. All right, hot air balloon mission aborted. He's going long down there. I'm getting closer and closer to sunset. Might as well start making my way back towards the park now that we're fighting a headwind. All right, well, as we cruise gingerly back to the park at a safe altitude, let's read some YouTube comments, see if there's any good questions we can answer. One of the most common questions from the Icarus series is asking about, like, why didn't I wear a full face helmet, motorcycle helmet of some sort, and why didn't I wear eye protection? Generally, I don't like eye protection because I don't like anything that obstructs my vision. However, on this mission, I think it would have been a really good idea and it would have been worth the benefit of keeping the uh, wind out of my eyes for all day long flights and keeping the sun off my face. I didn't wear a full face motorcycle helmet because that really limits your visibility. There's not very good uh, hearing protection and they're just bulky. Good question. Someone asked what was the average weight on my back? I never really weighed my gear, but I would estimate motor alone with gas is probably pushing uh, 100 pounds, plus about, I think my bag was probably 25. So probably about 125 pounds total. It was pretty brutal. I feel like it's a unique night out here. It's relatively strong wind, but it's actually not that turbulent. Maybe it's that I just flew the Icarus race and turbulence now doesn't feel like a thing. 
Yes, I see a cat. There goes Kibble. Ah, so comfy. Oh, they got a light on over at the park. I wonder if they're doing some sort of activity. Sports ball. Oh, it might. Ah, the Pee Wee Soccer League. Those were the best days of my life. Just kidding, I never played soccer. After I cleaned out the, the, the head, the piston, put a new plug in there, and add in that we went from high elevation down back to like 500 feet MSL, this engine's got all its power back. <laughs> when I went out to uh, Montana, the first flight out there, I was like, damn, where's the top end? Like three quarters on, kind of lacked. But now it's got it back. There's nothing wrong. All right, so this is how we make everyone down there, the Pee Wee Soccer League, think that I'm about to die. Just got a whole bunch of altitude, gonna rip a fat sat. Some people have asked, like, I should do a video all about sats. And I don't think I'm really qualified to teach people how to do a sat, especially through the means of YouTube. But uh, here's a down and dirty, how you do a sat. I like to take my throttle off, just because the motor's going to die anyway. When we load up all the G's, put my hands in there. I wrap on this line, then we'll brace here. We check our surroundings, we'll weight shift, then we pull the living f out of this line. And we go like that. And when we want to come out, we just ease on out of it. Let go of that wrap. And a little asymmetric -y shindig to get out of it. And now I'm really dizzy. Yeah, buddy. Oh, belly. Better not botch this landing. There's people watching. I land in the freaking cornfield. Like, boo, that guy sucks. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready for a nap. Well, already, that was a pretty fantastic adventure. Classic New Jersey shenanigans. Just flying around, having a good time. Back in New Jersey for a while. Trying to get the whole van life thing started up. Gonna see how that goes. Look out for some Halloween episodes. And uh, if you're not subscribed yet, hit that button. We're gonna be here flying around. Probably going to Florida sometime soon and going out west sometime soon. That's the goal. Get a van, go out west. So till the next one, hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.